So countries can connect in many, many different ways with their diasporas. Obviously, a very easy way and way that many countries do it is through philanthropy and fundraising and supporting non-profit organizations in the home country, particularly appealing to the more successful of their diaspora who live in host countries. But it's not just philanthropy. It's all sorts of other dimensions in which the relationship can develop. There's tourism, there's education, there's trade, there's inward investment, there's a whole area of culture, the whole area of sport. So countries now can develop a series of different diaspora strategies in these different areas. One of the things that challenges that we face is to link them up, to join the dots in these different ways of connecting. Also, for the first time ever, technology is making things possible which was never possible before. We can, through social media and other devices, we can connect at a mass level with people around the world who have an interest in their home country. In many ways, we're able to break down the tyranny of distance and identity is no longer purely a function of geography. You can live a hyphenated life if you like. You can be American and Polish or Italian or Australian and Scottish or Brazilian and Italian. There's lots of different ways that you can connect. In no way does it diminish your contribution and involvement participation for your existing country that you live in but allows you to connect with a country that you have some historical, ancestral, or just general interest in. And that's the really exciting thing about this world now. These things are being made possible by technology that wasn't possible before.